Hello again and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and you are watching Sculpt January number 29 and the topic was Harpy, so Beast and uh, Harpy. Um, I went slightly different um, and I did a sort of weird Harpy. Harpies are supposed to have their arms are wings, they don't actually have arms as well. Well, supposedly, they're a mythical creature so you can get away with lots of things. Um, I brought my base shape in from the Catwoman type thing. Uh, it's, it's basically a Khajiit, isn't it, from um, Skyrim. Uh, and I didn't even realise that whilst I was doing it, but it must have subliminally, subliminally <laughs> been in my brain. Uh, and all the time while I was doing it, I was thinking I was being quite original, but not in the slightest. Not that I th actually thought I was being original, but um, if, if for some reason I'd forgotten about the Skyrim Khajiit. Anyway, I brought that uh, base mesh in, and then I brought the head in uh, from my Melancholy and uh, used both of those. And I thought that was quite a nice starting point uh, to add a bit more detail for a harpy. Uh, the whole thing took about three hours, uh, but that was with a lot of sort of faffing around and figuring things out uh, outside that time. So although that's recording time, uh, so the sort of raw working on time, there was lots of, like I say, fiddling about and trying to uh, work things out. It took me, uh, I don't know, at least 15 minutes to figure out the size of the head compared to the body. Something didn't look quite right. And I was sort of adding up uh, how big the head should be because there's uh, seven roughly heads to a female body uh, and I think because the feet are really big uh, for this uh, Catwoman thing <laughs> that uh, it's kind of through me and then you can see there that the head was way too high and it took me time to bring it down but it is so important that you get these things right because changing them later is a killer it really is it just doesn't doesn't happen uh, trying to resize um, or re yeah, rescale a head um, yeah, uh, when it's been connected is just a nightmare. I didn't do it separately. I could have uh, kept it separate and maybe had some sort of weird collar on or something to join the two together. Um, but I thought I'd probably get away with it. I was not going to go too fine a detail uh, so I'd be able to sort of boolean, uh, uh, rig the mesh and uh, pose it. And that turned out quite well. It, sometimes when I rig the meshes, uh, I, it just sort of, with automatic weights, it skins really nicely. And other times it doesn't do a very good job at all. And this time it was really nice. So I hardly had to do any modification. In fact, I didn't do any sculpting after the rig. I mean, it would have been a bit nicer if I had. And if I had more time, I would, would have liked to have spent a lot more time doing the, the minor details of this sculpt. Because it's a really good fun one. And it, it made me think actually, um, that am I, well, I don't know, what, at what stage do you think I ought to be using professional software for this? Um, I love Blender, I think it's amazing. And obviously I'm, uh, well, I suppose I'm, I'm always gonna stick to it in some shape or form uh, because uh, this YouTube channel means quite a lot to me and my support base, you guys, I'm assuming are all using Blender. Uh, so, uh, but, but there's a part of me that thinks if I went across the ZBrush, uh, or ZBrush, uh, then I could probably go much further uh, in terms of the detail. So with the feathers and just those, uh, the feathery aspects of her um, sort of feathery bikini. <laughs> because I had to do a feathery bikini because I didn't want to, uh, one, uh, uh, YouTube doesn't like uh, boobs and things like that, uh, nudity in general. Uh, so uh, one of my uh, videos from my previous Sculpt January, there's a female um, torso uh, is has been banned from advertising on it because it's got nudity in it. I think it's pretty ludicrous, I know. And I have actually uh, sort of tried to um, apply for it not to be, uh, but it hasn't gone through. It's still not able to have adverts put on it. Uh, and not that it gets a lot of advertising revenue, but it'd just be frustrating um, if it didn't. And I suppose I just sort of thought it would be easier to cover her up and uh, make it more PC. Yeah, it seems the internet's kind of going that way a bit more uh, with, I think it's Tumblr, uh, getting rid of all its porn and stuff like that. I'm rambling now again, I'll stop doing that. But um, but I suppose that does affect us as artists. So what, what can we um, paint, draw, sculpt? Uh, and we have to be aware that it might offend people. And if you are trying to be a commercial artist in some way, so this is partly uh, a living for me, 
uh, then I have to consider these things. Uh, so these are things, uh, things to think about and it's not too much rambling, it's uh, slightly useful. This is the first time I've used the masking tool for a long time and when you're doing things like fingers I think it's really very useful. It's nice to have the brush just quickly there, you click on the masking brush, paint your object and then press Alt M when you want to clear it and that was lovely and I ought to use it more often really. Um, I usually just find it a bit uh, slow, it just sl slightly slows me down and if I can just get in there without having to use it I will but in this case uh, for the fingers they were quite close together so it made a lot of sense. That probably took the most time actually, the hands, and they weren't the most uh, interesting aspect of the sculpt really. It was a strange one this, uh, I was sort of panicking about it knowing that it was going to take a long time and it ended up not taking that long. And sometimes that stops you from doing things and stops you from getting on and uh, having a go and um, I was uh, really sort of dawdling to get going with this sculpt and I was taking lots of breaks, uh, which is, is a good thing to do definitely but uh, it's probably a bit more than I should have. I could have pushed on through in, in places, I think, anyway. Uh, so um, still uh, sculpting away, getting rid of all those aspects that aren't needed. Uh, so uh, yeah, like I say, she's sort of gonna have a, a feathery bikini type thing, uh, feather-based bikini, as all harpies do. <laughs> and uh, so uh, weirdly, I, I'm not that great at uh, doing breasts. Uh, and maybe it's because I haven't got any. Uh, that I can't really visualize it or something or maybe I feel awkward uh, looking at them for reference images I don't know uh, just not very good at them so <laughs> I don't know why I'm always talking about something stupid aren't I anyway let's talk about the tail <laughs> let's talk about the tail instead uh, I thought I'd give it a tail uh, harpies don't have tails uh, as in the mythical sense well uh, all the sort of older drawings and uh, masters who drew sort of these mythical things and old paintings they don't have tails but I saw a really good one, sort of, it was more a nymph uh, with wings than a harpy, but it just looked good with a tail, so I thought it'd be quite fun and help with the dynamic pose. Um, what, there's so many things I should have done, actually. Um, I, it would have been nice to have um, had uh, sort of tiny feathers coming off like, to make the pose more dynamic. And the fact that the rig worked out so well with the skinning and everything, I could have animated this quite easily, and there's a bit you'll see in a moment where I was just playing, because I obviously set uh, three different poses up for the wings, uh, that um, just scrubbing along the timeline, they looked a little bit like they were flapping, they were just moving really. Uh, but it would have been quite easy, uh, in a sense, to animate, but it would have been another half hour, uh, which I just can't afford just at this moment. It's a shame really, because there's lots I could have done. I would like to have painted this as well, just with a bit of paint, um, so brown uh, colors on some of the feathers, uh, and sort of skin tones and things uh, would have been quite nice. Um, but uh, this is it's a tough one. That, uh, it was a tough one over the weekend uh, trying to fit everything in and I've had a couple of jobs, filming jobs as well as my teaching. So uh, it's been tough to keep up. Uh, so I'm only just on time as it were. So I've got to fill another one in today, another sculpt. I think the next one is Pride. I think it's Pride anyway. Uh, and I've got to do that today because I'm working tomorrow. Uh, so I'll only have a bit of time to finish that off and do the video tomorrow. Uh, Thursday's one was Extreme Pose or something I'll have all day and that'll be the last one so that'd be nice. It'd be nice to do something special but I might just be a bit burnt out by then. I'd say a bit burnt out, not proper burnt out, but uh, just a bit too uh, dead at that point to do anything extra special. <laughs> it's difficult to say isn't it because uh, once you get into these things and maybe if I know that there's, I've got all day to do it um, I might sort of uh, go to town a bit more <laughs> but sometimes these things go wrong and it's not always as simple as that. I did uh, look up uh, lots of things for uh, the wings. Uh, I've never tried uh, uh, wings like this before. So uh, that, what I was going to do, I did this sort of blob, got my blob out and uh, started uh, pulling it around, got it into this shape and it's still really re uh, low resolution. Uh, and then I went in, uh, did a few details of sort of um, rough feathers but just very rough and this is all with the multi-resolution modifier so uh, used the blob got it into position low res and then put the multi-res on it but I forgot to turn mirror on uh, and you can't just mirror to the other side uh, with multi-resolution modifier it just uh, doesn't quite work like that 
I think. <laughs> Although I, could, I couldn't think of any way to mirror it across the other side. Uh, but perhaps auto mirror might have worked. Um, but that's in 2.7, it's not available for 2.8. And you can see I've just sort of paused there thinking, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I'm just going to go back to Dyntopo, mirror it, and it's going to be a bit low res and see how I get on. And uh, just keep the whole shape a bit low res. Uh, the details are there, you can kind of see what's going on. It came out all right in the end. I was quite pleased with it. Um, but like I say, I would have wanted to go that bit more detailed um, to really experiment with the feather shapes and um, the sort of um, those minor, uh, those really intricate details. That's what the word I'm looking for, intricate. Um, but I did use the multi-resolution modifier for the one feather that I copied across. And you can see me copying it across now. Uh, it's got, you can see there on the, uh, next to me here, <laughs> it's got the multi-resolution modifier on and it's got a solidify and it's got a subdivision surface modifier on as well. So, uh, so I can sculpt it, uh, add the detail, but it's uh, in preview mode or in layout mode um, as I'm in at the moment, it's only got, um, what is it, two uh, of the multi-resolutions on, uh, so it's running nice and smoothly. It hasn't got a lot of detail in it anyway. Um, but that's that's the other thing. All these feathers. If I'd if I'd be using something like ZBrush, I think it, uh, apparently it can handle really high poly uh, shapes. So I wouldn't have to be worrying about uh, what, um, uh, what how high poly I'm going and that sort of thing so much. I, I might be um, the grass is greener attitude and thinking it's it's always going to be better than Blender, but. Um, it, it's, it's tricky to say, isn't it? When you get to a certain point and the software may be holding you back and you're worried about it holding you back, uh, you, you really ought to be doing everything you can to be moving forward and not letting those things get in your way. So um, I'm not sure. Am I ready for uh, moving on? Uh, I've still got lots to learn. It's tricky to say, isn't it? Um, but uh, maybe uh, you can comment in the description about your opinions on that one, about uh, moving on to different software and uh, because I, I don't, I think it's just ZBrush, isn't it, that's better than Blender. I haven't heard anybody say other ones. Uh, in fact, I can't think of any other ones. I'm sure there are. I know, in fact, I know there are. But uh, no one, everybody says it's ZBrush, that's the one you should go for. Um, and Blender does an amazing job. Look, look, all this detail and all these polys, it's doing brilliantly. Uh, but uh, when you want to push yourself onto the next level uh, and that next layer of detail, you don't want anything hindering you. Anyway, that's uh, <laughs> my two cents worth there. Uh, with the eyes, I could have just put some spheres back in, but uh, I knew that it, uh, we were going to be viewing this from a distance, and I didn't want to be faffing around, uh, putting spheres in, lining them up and things, and I thought I'd just quickly get the shape, smarten it up a bit, and uh, when you're using the pinch brush, it's a good idea to turn Dine Topo off. Uh, well, that's what I've found. It works quickly and uh, just smarten things up. Uh, nicely. In this case, anyway, having said that, I've seen other people use uh, Dine Topper with a pinch brush and do it very successfully, so uh, maybe that's uh, bad advice. Anyway, uh, doing my rig now, um, I bought the, it was the same rig that I was using for the uh, Khajiit, I'm just going to call it Khajiit now. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it as well, Khajiit? Uh, in the Skyrim cat things. I think they're Khajiits. <laughs> suddenly, I suddenly start doubting myself when I'm just talking to the camera constantly over and over. Uh, I start thinking, are my words even making sense? Uh, I did a, I'm not sure that's the best way to rig a thumb as well, because you can't move the hand together like that very easily, but it's nice to be able to move it on its own. It didn't cause me a problem, uh, but I was thinking about that whilst modeling it. <laughs> it's, it and in a sense, uh, Riggy, I'm not that experienced with those sort of animation techniques and stuff. Hopefully when I do animation, uh, well, we'll get into that, then we'll do more. And in, from now until then, I'll be working on some animation skills, tutorials and things in order to uh, do animation as a community, hopefully, uh, if you'll join me <laughs> with animation. Maybe I'll even get some sponsorship. Some people are actually asking me to, uh, if they can um, sponsor my channel and things, usually sort of uh, 3D 
uh, uh, printers and things like that. Uh, it's interesting though, it's, uh, it's nice to, that they uh, think my channel's decent. <laughs> uh, but it'd be nice if I could get some sponsorship and then have some prizes, that'd be quite fun really. Uh, but I'm not making any promises there. I, I'm just not very organised, that's the problem. <laughs> so organising prizes, that's just that's, uh, too much. Anyway, uh, so uh, putting it into a pose. So this was the first pose, um, and like I said, I chose three different poses. Um, you've got to be really careful with uh, 2.8 and posing because uh, if you press undo, you'll lose the whole lot uh, and it'll go back to um, its keyframe. So set up your keyframes and put them into poses and things. Uh, and yep, so I was happy, reasonably happy with that pose, I think. I think I was happy with that pose anyway. And just did some basic um, rig for the wing uh, so I could sort of move it around and adapt it. That turned out quite nicely. Again, the skinning just seemed to work today. Uh, and other days it sort of warps things around. Probably something I've done. It's a user error by <laughs> the chances are anyway. Uh, so yes, putting the uh, wing into place. This was quite the fun bit really, because wings are quite amazing things really, aren't they? And moving them around, pushing them into place so they sort of curl up and uh, it's sort of interesting angles uh, was a lot of fun. And there I, did, I got caught out by the undo uh, bit just then, uh, as you can probably tell. Uh, but yeah, you can sort of see some animation happening there. I was thinking, oh, that could be fun. Um, and it's always good, I'm finding at the moment anyway, with your poses, um, the first pose you do and you think that's fine, the second pose you do, really over exaggerate it. And then often the, <laughs> often I choose the second one because I feel like it's over exaggerated. And then I sometimes think I probably could have even pushed that further because um, like this, um, I can't, and dreadful at names on YouTube, I always forget to write them down and um, sort of uh, remember them. Uh, but someone was saying about the weight of my poses and I think, yeah, how am I gonna improve that? And I think pushing that um, sort of pose stage and uh, going to extreme poses and uh, trying to make them uh, sort of give it that extra pizzazz, pizzazz, a silly word. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, going um, overboard in one of your poses just to see what it looks like. And weirdly, I end up choosing that overboard, what I thought was an overboard pose. And then when I, after looking at it, I'm thinking it's not my overboard at all. It could have even gone further. So yes, um, try that perhaps with your poses. So I'm kind of getting there. You can see actually I've got these sort of spare wing, spare feathers uh, in the background and it would have been quite nice to have some, as if uh, the harpy had been startled and sort of burst into flight and then you see feathers occasionally, don't you, uh, flying off um, pigeons or whatever when they're startled. Uh, so it might have been quite good in this case, but um, I, I didn't really have time to experiment with that. So uh, a bit of a shame, but it would have been nice, I think. I can't remember how much more I show of my lighting setup uh, because I, I'm sort of uh, conscious that it's going to a certain point and it's a sculpting uh, conversation uh, more than uh, a lighting conversation. But it's nice to light your, um, your models uh, before you um, uh, render them. Uh, and lots of people do some really nice lighting actually. Uh, there's a couple on Sculpt January that are worth looking at. I'd like to know how they, exactly how they do it. I think, oh there was, there's the wing animation that was quite fun. And it would have been great fun to animate some wings. That would have been really exciting. But uh, yeah, no time. But yeah, it'd be nice to know how they light it, um, some of their work and pieces. And uh, they really are nice. I think some of them use grease pencil actually um, to sort of add um, some sort of smoke effects and things. It looks really clever and really nice. Oh, I have left a bit in then. Uh, so sort of strong backlighting is always quite fun. Uh, just that makes everything look dramatic, strong backlighting generally in cinema. Uh, but you can see me messing around with volumetrics and stuff. Always have a go at volumetrics, but I don't think it was really suitable in this case. It looks kind of fun, uh, but in reality, it, I think it was better uh, as is. Um, but yes, I would like to spend more time on these renders, really. And I suppose uh, most people are rendering just one still frame, and that's a bit easier in a sense. And I'm trying to make it so you can have a sort of uh, turnaround of the model. Uh, so that's my excuse anyway. Uh, much harder, much harder to get a turnaround. And there we go, there's the final piece with a bit of bloom, a huge bit of bloom on the back there, which was quite fun. I kept that in, uh, but it's probably a bit over the top, really. But uh, had fun with this one. It was exciting. I would have liked to have done more with the tail there as well. Uh, just again, ran out of time. But uh, it's uh, it's exciting, dramatic. Anyway, onto the Discord server. For some reason, this one wasn't um, 
loading up very quickly. But uh, nice piece there. Uh, there's some wonderful pieces again, as always. Uh, I love these little snails. They're really cleverly done. Uh, beautiful pieces. Uh, beast, jungle beast there. Uh, nice work. This is damaged. It's got his feet sort of pulled around the wrong way. It's very scary. Uh, roof and stent with, um, that's quite a, the delicate one I'm assuming. That looks really, you know, really well done there. Uh, a couple of people done a, a lion jumping through a hoop and it for smooth and I'm thinking is that something I don't, I don't know that what the, well, how that relates to smooth completely. Maybe just sort of ooh, smooth because they jump through. But it looks good. It looks really nice. Uh, smooth uh, surfer on the waves, nice. This one is tremendously good. Sarah, Phil oh, I've lost, uh, I can't say the name, but absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That's uh, one of my favorites of the whole um, Sculpt January um, Discord server, um, sting me, whatever we're doing here. <laughs> but really well done. That's a nice one as well. Yeah, really extreme pose there. But it, like I say, it's good to do that, isn't it? Get these extreme poses. I go back to this one because it's the fungal enchanter. Oh, look at that. That's just brilliant, isn't it? Uh, really well done there. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all your support. Only a couple left now. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to finishing, but it has been uh, good fun. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.